Welcome to video one of BME 331 Transport Phenomena Supplemental Instruction. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at how you go about justifying a solution method for an unsteady state conduction problem. Now there are four methods discussed, discussed in chapter 18 and we're going to be going through each one. We're going to start with the easiest one, lump parameter. Now why is it the easiest? It's the easiest because it's, we're assuming that the temperature profile in the system doesn't vary with position, it only varies with time. So what does that mean? Well, it means that um, we can go back to, all the way back to chapter 6, equation 610. And if you look at that equation, you can cancel out everything uh, besides change in heat and the control volume. Okay? And pretty much it simplifies down to this equation, dQ dt equals sudden change in energy over control volume. Okay? That's all that this is saying. As far as the boundary conditions uh, that this system needs to have, at uh, t, at the, the, time, the temperature at t equals zero is some constant t naught. Okay? And the second one, is that for any time greater than zero, the temperature is the same throughout the entire system. So what that means is that our the temperature is uh, is just a constant at that given time, and that temperature applies to any position in our system. Okay, uh, for the next one, uh, finite surface resistance, our conservation equation has to simplify down to uh, change in temperature with time is alpha uh, some sort of second derivative of temperature with respect to one spatial variable. I'm just using uh, dx. Uh, you could, this could be dr, d theta, um, dz, but it can only be with respect to one spatial variable. Okay? If you're worried about temperature changes in two directions, you can't use this solution method described in chapter 18. Also, you're, you'll notice that there is no uh, Q dot, okay? Doesn't exist. If you have a Q dot heat generation in your equation, you cannot use finite surface resistance. All right, and uh, let's look at the boundary conditions. One of them, in order to use this method, uh, you have to have convection at a surface. So your boundary condition is going to be your typical uh, negative dt dx equals hkt minus t infinity. And this is at the surface. Okay? There we go. You can kind of make sense of that. The second one is we have to have a flux boundary condition equal to zero at uh, some sort of symmetry plane in the system. So that could be um, a center line. It could also be like the center of, a, center of a sphere. It could be the axis of a cylinder. Some sort of plane of symmetry, center line. All right. Uh, the third one is negl negligible surface resistance. Now, you're going to have this same equation that's up here. It's going to your system, your system's conservation equation is going to actually simplify to the same general form for these next three, for these uh, bottom three solution methods. Okay, so one directional temperature conduction and no heat generation. The only thing that's different between these bottom three are the boundary conditions. So let's take a look at the boundary conditions for negligible surface resistance. Uh, the first one is that the temperature at the surface, so at x equals zero, is constant for all time. Okay? So temperature at the surface e equals some sort of constant 
for all time. All right? This little upside down A just means for all time. For all. Uh, the second boundary condition is that eventually the temperature is going to equal the temperature at the surface at some distance in your system for some t greater than zero. All right, moving on to some infinite solid. Once again, it's the same conservation equation, no heat generation, and our boundary conditions. Um, at the surface, your temperature at the surface is going to be uh, constant, once again, for all time. Okay? And the second thing is that your temperature is going to approach a T naught as you go farther as you go farther into your system as X approaches infinity. If you want you can pause the video now and take a screenshot of this. I'm going to erase it. Moving on, let's take a look at some extra info that uh, we can use to justify a certain solution method. Okay? For lump parameter, your BO number needs to be uh, significantly less than one, so like one order of magnitude less than one. Uh, just so you remember, uh, the BO number is just the surface conduction coefficient times some characteristic length um, over your heat conduction transfer coefficient, K, kappa. All right? And Remember, your BO number gives you some idea of how much convection is prevailing over conduction. Okay? For finite surface resistance, your BO number needs to be about 1. And additionally, your Fourier number needs to be about 1. And what about one means is like one order of magnitude from one. So anywhere from 0 0.1 to 10. All right. Negligible surface resistance, your BO number needs to be significantly greater than one. Remember what this is saying is that since our BO number is greater than one, um, Convection is dominating in our system. All right. So the temperature at the surface is going to immediately go to the temperature of the uh, surroundings at T equals zero. If we want to use the semi-infinite solid approach, then our Fourier number needs to be significantly greater than 1. And just so you remember, the Fourier number is equal to alpha over t divided by the characteristic length squared. And alpha equals k rho CP. So once you've determined what conservation equation what, and what boundary conditions and what BO and or Fourier number matches your system, you can decide on a solution method and use the appropriate equation. All right. For the lump parameter, the equation that we refer to is the temperature at the time we're concerned about minus the temperature of the surroundings divided by the initial temperature minus the temperature of the surroundings equals E negative H area times time over rho CP times the volume. 
Okay? With finite surface resistance, uh, we're, we refer to equation 18.6, no, 18.16, excuse me, in the book. It's a really complicated equation, but that's why we refer to appendix F. Okay? And when we go to appendix F, there's four different values that we need to know. Y, X, N, and N. Y is temperature of the surroundings minus the temperature we're concerned about over temperature of the surroundings minus initial temperature. X is just alpha T X1 squared. N is the temperature at the length we're concerned about over the characteristic length. And M is kappa over H times the characteristic length. Negligible surface resistance. We look at equation 1813 in the book. Um, equation 1813 is also kind of complicated. It has to do with iterations and pretty much you can refer to figure 18.3 and it has a graph that you can look at for different solids, whether it's a plane, a slab, a cylinder, etc., etc. There's two numbers that you need to find in order to use this chart, y and x. Uh, y is the temperature you're concerned about minus temperature of the surface and divided by T naught minus TS. And x is same as above, this alpha T divided by x1 squared. And last but not least, we have semi-infinite solid. That is equation 1820. Use equation 1820 if you know the surface temperature. Okay? If the problem gives you the solution temperature, you want to use equation 1820. So temperature of the surface minus temperature of concern about minus divided by temperature of the surface minus T naught. Once again, just to make clear, use um, sorry I missed a bit on this equation it's this equals the error function of x over 2 times the square root of alpha t and you can find uh, a value, a table for error functions in Appendix F. No, Appendix L. However, if you don't know the surface temperature, you're going to want to refer to equation 1821 in the book. Now, it's kind of long, but if you, if you have all the values, it's not that hard to solve. Alright, good luck.